Am I the asshole for blasting copyrighted music anytime somebody tries to TikTok video on the bus or train I am on to get them strikes? I've done this at least six or seven times, but the most recent time made me curious. So, some girl a few days ago on a bus I ride regularly had her friend take her phone and started recording for TikTok. And I quickly started playing Disney music, then asked them to stop because I don't care for being recorded. She lost her shit yelled at me, called me an asshole, and told me to turn the music off, and even tried to get me kicked off the bus when I refused. I turned it back on every time they tried to record, purely to make sure they could get copyright strikes if they tried to upload. So here's the question. Am I the asshole? Are they the asshole, everyone? They could mute the aud- like, they could mute the video, but maybe they needed some sort of audio from the video. I like this. I was in shot. That's important to know. People don't have to be recorded if they don't want to be. You're filming in front of the bus? Huh? I respect it. This one is oddly split. It's petty, but good for him. I can see that. All right. Not an asshole or asshole with good reason, if you will. You know who's the real asshole here? Fucking DMCA. Screw it. That's the real asshole here. That's where I'm falling. All right. Am I the asshole for grounding my daughter for using an evil spell? on her deceased mother. So my daughter is a frequent user of witches and patriarchy. As you can imagine, I think it has a negative effect on her psyche. She makes voodoo dolls of people at work, draws magic circles and the like. She also has really sporadic moods as sometimes she's really positive, while other times she'll threaten to lightning the house out of existence. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Some of the things she comes up with shocks me outright. One time she kept period blood from like a year ago and mixed it with wine honey, and glue so she could use it to draw a circle. The reason she did this was because she thought she could convert a guy to a state of semi-infancy and that he would return to his mom's womb. A recent incident is when she woke me up in the middle of the night asking me to give her an undercut so she could get a ram, a ram mam tattoo on her scalp. But then she panicked and changed her mind because she said cutting too much long hair at once would damage her life force because it was enchanted. Ram Mams from He-Man? Interesting. Oh, undercuts a, a haircut? Now to the present. Yesterday, we were watching TV during dinner and a news story about how some mom abandoned her kid in a car came on. Daughter made a nasty remark about how she thought mom would have done that to her if she got the chance. I told her that was rude and she murmured an apology. So I thought things were good until I woke up for work and found her drawing a magic circle in the backyard, which she said would curse mom's soul and make her afterlife tedious. So I grounded her. <laughs> the terms were no iPhone, she can use a flip phone for emergencies when going out, and no Reddit, Twitter for a week, and no playing witch until she apologizes about the situation. No playing witch. She screamed and is crying in her room right now. The reason I came here today is because I'm wondering if I am assholish for the punishment. She is old enough to live on her own, but she suffers with disability, and I don't think she will do very well with the state she's in. I want to have a good relationship with daughter, and I'm scared this witch stuff will hurt not only the relationship, but her life in the long run. So I don't want to come off as mean, but am I the asshole? I, Carlos, that's, I totally agree with you. This is too specific, too unusual, to be made up. You're all saying this is fake. It's too unusual. That said it's my turn to draw magic circles in the backyard. But did we use period blood? That is the real question. <sighs> what, first of all, it sounds like your daughter has a mental il illness, which has been ignored and therefore channeled into her beliefs. Second, there is so obviously something going on with your child that I doubt this is a one-off behavior. Also, she's not playing. Your daughter needs help. Mm. Either fake or a daughter needs some help. Therapy, maybe. All right, thank you for voting. We are going to say this one is fake. Am I the asshole for telling another mom to enjoy her nursing home when she is older? My daughter is four and recently started attending pre-K. I've made some friends with some of the older, with some of the other parents in her class. With my daughter, I practice gentle parenting. I communicate with her and tell her that her feelings are okay, but her behavior is not. I don't expect obedience from her, but to think about the right choices to make and although she and mommy aren't equals on authority, we are equal on respect. There's one mom whose son is in my daughter's pre-K class who we will call RJ. 
RJ has four kids and has a completely different parenting style than me. She constantly berates them and hands out big consequences for even the smallest offenses. She's brought other kids to pick her son up and all of her kids look beaten down and sad. She doesn't even care about it. She'll say stuff like, I don't care if they like me or hate me in the future. I'm just happy I'm not raising special snowflakes. There's one dad who I've become close friends with and we text each other about how we feel about RJ's parenting. I keep my mouth shut since she's so stuck in her ways and it won't do anything good. On Friday, I picked up my daughter and she threw a small fit and dealt and quickly resolved it as I usually do. RJ saw this and confronted me telling me I was too soft with my daughter and am what is wrong with parents today and gave me parenting advice which that I could never imagine applying to my parenting with my daughter. I hit my limit and just blurted out, yeah, well, enjoy your nursing home when you can't take care of yourself anymore. That's where the parents who emotionally abuse their kids go and stormed out before getting a reaction. I texted my daughter later to ask him if my words had any weight to RJ. He told me she cursed up a storm about me, called me an ass, but got over it. Apparently a few other parents think I stepped out of line, but most of them, at least the vocal ones support what I said. I know I may have crossed the line, but I feel like I said what had to be said and she criticized my parenting in the first place. That is true, she gave parenting advice to this dude. Is this person, the asshole, first saying, will enjoy your nursing home. The other parents can choke. Unsolicited advice means unsolicited answer. She brought up parenting styles and forced her advice on you. She opened that can of worms. Now she's she gets to deal with the backlash. All right. Thank you for voting. Am I the asshole for getting a septum piercing knowing my husband hates them? So for the last two years, I've been experimenting with fake septum piercings rings to see if I like them. My husband announced immediately that he hates them. He says that he's never found them attractive on anyone and that it removes all femininity from a woman's face. My best friend purchased a gift card for me to have the piercing done at my convenience. I told him about it and he whined, but we didn't really bring it up again. A few months later, I got a wild hair and decided to just do it. The first day I kept it flipped up because I was scared. The next day I flipped it down and he didn't say anything. He even kissed me goodbye and didn't say anything. I thought he saw it and was just completely ignoring it. I was fine with that. The next day he noticed it, asked exasperated if it was real. I told him it was. He groaned, hugged me and left for work. I thought that was the end of it. The next day he wouldn't speak to me, completely ignored my existence. I asked him if he couldn't even bring himself to look at me and he screamed at me in front of our young children that no, he could not. That's when it came well came out. Throughout the morning, he messaged me telling me that he couldn't believe I betrayed him in this way, that I had ruined my beautiful face, that now he was going to have trust issues about everything going forward. He accused me of trying to do things to myself to make him like me less, and that he was scared I was doing this in hopes that he wouldn't want to be with me anymore. I was speechless. To me, this was a simple piercing I've been wanting for that time, that I experimented with them that he knew I wanted and finally just did it. I feel like an asshole doing it without telling him, but with his dramatic reaction to the entire thing is what made me avoid doing that in the first place. I knew if I had told him that he would talk me out of it, a lot of other things were said. I had to leave work because I was so upset by the situation. Then a few hours later, he said, okay, I've yelled at you. I feel better now and not so angry. I'm okay. And I just, God, the emotional whiplash. Thinking about my husband of 10 years now thinks I'm hideous, suddenly is okay and is ready to see me again. What the fuck is this? Is this emotional abuse? Am I red? Am I really that big of an asshole? I appreciate any and all advice. Hmm. Everyone sucks here. Your husband is being emotionally manipulative and he yelled in front of the children. He's definitely the biggest asshole. Nope. Two assholes do not make a right asshole. However, this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I think you do give up a little bit of bodily autonomy when you marry someone. And that spouses should generally avoid making major changes without discussing it first and coming to an understanding. If not in agreement, yes, it's your body, but your spouse is the one that is going to spend the most time looking at it. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? I don't think I like that. I don't think I agree with that. Do you give up some bodily autonomy, some control over your body by marrying someone? Mind you, this was upvoted to the top. I had no say with my nip piercings. The partner can eat shit. Hmm. What if he did something bigger? What's something bigger? Well, okay, hold up. Question for you, hypothetical. Okay, we'll do that one next, Ames. Imagine a face tattoo. Imagine your partner gets a face tattoo without consulting you. Thoughts. Can I get a magic one? 
Hmm. That's not the same thing. How is it different, Techie? If it's their face, they don't have to consult you. I think I'm in the same boat as we were with the septum piercing. If it's well done or not, God is a girl. I think it's still their complete control. I think plastic surgery falls into it too. I'm seeing different results in here. Piercing isn't permanent. Interesting. When some, some would say piercing is permanent because it's a change they want to make forever. Yeah, yelling is too much. Yeah, the okay I yell at you, I'm okay now is pretty weird, champ. Pretty rude. I'm telling you, I told you before, everything's just down to communication. It's crazy. Am I the asshole for wanting my girlfriend to work out more than just legs? Me and my girlfriend of two years regularly go to the gym. She started recently and she seems to only do leg workouts and we barely interact with each other at the gym because I like to work on my whole body. Um, so the other day I asked if she wanted to work out with me so we can have the same workout routine. That's when she replied with, I don't want to as she continues her only legs workout program. Then I tried to name some benefits of working the entire body by saying you'll see progress in your legs way faster if you include your upper body so your legs have time to recover and rest. I know she wants to be in her peak physique, but she thinks peak physique only means having a big butt. I personally care more about her other muscles improving, such as her chest and back. The fuck? Now I don't mind her body right now, as that's the body I fell in love with, but I just wish she didn't take advice the wrong way. I feel like there's no convincing her without putting it in her head that she's not good enough, which she 100% is in my eyes. I haven't spoken about it since that day because she seemed really irritated when I gave her reasons to work out with me. Am I the asshole for giving her advice and wanting her to work out her full body? The fuck? You didn't just give advice. <laughs> she's perfect except for this list that it could improve and here's how you do it. You're not doing it right. Maybe asshole? That's a lot of maybes. That's a lot of maybes. Let her work out what she wants. How is it maybe assholery? Advice isn't bad. Hmm. That's more than advice though. All right, thank you for voting. This one's gonna fall in maybe. I would have said definitely. Am I the asshole for asking my cafe staff to lock their phones in the office during work hours? A little context, I run a small cafe bar in the UK and am becoming increasingly frustrated seeing my staff members, including managers, sending personal men messages and scrolling through Facebook during work hours, which obviously I'm paying them for. I want their work to be relaxed and enjoyable, but I don't want them doing personal stuff on my time. Is it unreasonably unreasonable of me to ask them to keep their phones locked in the office for the duration of their shift? I brought this up with my manager yesterday after seeing them leaning against the bar, texting their partner, not for the first time while there were customers in and in full view of people walking past the window. They said it was unfair of me to expect staff not to have phones on them during shift in case of emergencies. They did concede that staff shouldn't be using their phones at the bar in view of customers general public, but was almost suggesting I was taking away their rights by not allowing them to have their phones in possession while at work. They suggested all staff put their phones in a side room so they can use them out of view of customers but I still think that would encourage them to be doing personal business while they're meant to be working. Is this person an asshole? Are they taking away rights? Hmm. I stand with the, the workers. Maybe, maybe an asshole. No, they're definitely being an asshole. What? This person suggests that they need to lock them away. I disagree. Phones should never be on the restaurant floor. I think the back room thing is is probably the best option. Depends on how much they're getting paid by the hour. I stand with the workers. Absolutely. I think simply asking them to not do it in view of the customers is the right move. Hmm. All right. Most of you say maybe. Maybe an asshole. Yes. Okay. Wow. Everyone, thank you for this time. Thank you for being here during our Am I the Asshole segment. I thought it went really well. I hope you enjoyed it. Can I be an asshole now? You can always be an asshole.